While the focus of Education Matters is K-12 public education, we also spend a great deal of time talking about issues that affect children before, during, and after formal school time. When you study the data and the issues that Layla Bell and Secretary Cohen discussed, the elephant that is almost always in the room is poverty. Today, in this vast, wealthy nation of ours, 15 million children live in poverty. In North Carolina, more than 500,000, or about one in five children, live in poverty. And that's based on the federal government's definition of poverty, which is a family of four with a total household income of $28,000 or less. Research suggests, though, that on average, families need about twice the federal threshold to meet their basic needs. In the Annie Casey Foundation Index, economic well-being is one of the four domains used to measure child well-being. But the truth is economic well-being impacts nearly all the others, whether it's reading proficiency, which we know directly correlates to the number of books in the home, for example, to lack of access to health care, which we know is overrepresented in our high poverty communities. Education has been called a great equalizer. It can be. Many have overcome tremendous odds and excelled in school and went on to make their mark in the world. But if we're going to give education, give our teachers, our school leaders, our children a fighting chance, we have to address poverty. It cannot be separated. And we can't pretend it doesn't exist or turn our backs on the real challenges that the poor and needy face and not expect to pay a price ourselves. I am reminded of one of the most haunting scenes from my favorite adaptation of A Christmas Carol with the great George C. Scott. It's during the visit by the ghost of Christmas present when he pulls back his robe to reveal two sick, malnourished, filthy children. The ghost bellows at Scrooge. They are your children. They are the children of all who walk the earth unseen. Their names are ignorance and want. Beware of them, for upon their brow is written the word doom. They spell the downfall of you and all who deny their existence. Scrooge then asks the ghost of Christmas present to cover them up because he doesn't want to see them anymore, again with the robe. The ghost complies, but then he sneers at Ebenezer Scrooge and says, they are hidden, but they live. Oh, they live. That's it for this week's show. Next week, we're going to discuss the recent move by the General Assembly to eliminate retiree health benefits for future teachers and all state employees. You'll definitely want us to tune in. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.